Hi guys, it is a flat out, spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times of South Austin, Texas. We have made it somehow to Friday morning, November 28, 2014, Black Friday. And like every other Friday, this is my easiest day. This is really my easiest day to be a doomsday prophet and an environmental alarmist here on Black Friday 2014. I just did my annual Black Friday rant from inside that gar doomsday garage, but I had to come out here and enjoy this lovely day sitting in my USA, my made in China USA flag chair to bring you this rant. And I'm going to kick off uh, th this is, th you know, what I do every Friday is share with you my two favorite environmental newsletters from Center for Biological Diversity and MangaBay.com. And it being a holiday week, they're pretty, pretty uh, skinned down this week. But I'm going to start this uh, rant. I'm picking up. I'm going to start this rant with the story that I finished my Black Friday rant from inside the garage with a minute ago from the Center for Biological Diversity Endangered Earth starting off in Miami, Florida. Uh, your Black Friday story. Dear Hambone, as hordes of shoppers swarm mega stores on Black Friday, a developer is plotting to pave over the most unique piece of unprotected wilderness left in Miami, Florida to make way for yet another Walmart. And they are asking you to boycott Walmart uh, for one day. I have been boycotting Walmart for six years now. And they mention in this story, I, I've, I've mentioned this story before, but I was not aware of this, that this 88 acres that the University of Miami sold to Walmart. I don't know for how many millions of dollars. And I come to find out that this 88 acres was originally donated by the federal government, otherwise known as the USA taxpayers, we're the ones who bought this 88 acres. It was given over to the University of Miami to, assumedly, to, to help further a university ends up in the hands of Walmart. And uh, there, there, there is all sorts of dot connecting uh, between the lines of that story. So what else is the uh, this center talking about today? I I, I love this uh, story. The 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 word choice here: triumph, triumph for wolves in Idaho. Warning! Warning! Bullshit! Uh, it's, uh, you know, what, what this story is about, I reported about it, where these, where, where this, this bunch of these goddamn redneck wolf haters, wolf killers, were holding a predator killing derby in Idaho on our federal public lands. I don't know why they're not holding their derby down there on that 88-acre Walmart in Miami. They might as well be. So anyway, the, 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 these goddamn uh, rednecks were going to be pouring out there in, in Idaho on, on BLM land to shoot as many wolves as they could. And the Center for Biological Diversity and a bunch of these other wolf lovers sued them and I guess the BLM, the good old Bureau of Livestock and Mining, has caved in, caved in, according to these wolf haters, to these tree huggers and said no wolf killing on public lands. And this is the definition of a triumph, a triumph for wolves in this country.
today. This is where it's gotten to where, where some goddamn rednecks are not allowed to go out in the middle of our public lands to shoot as many wolves as they can for a thousand dollar prize. And so anyway, this is their Thanksgiving issue. Uh, things to be thankful for. There we go. I guess we have the wolf returning to the Grand Canyon. More on her. We have some fuzzy little feel-good story. Return of the Bighorns. Where they're starting a new Bighorn herd down there in, in uh, Arizona. Here is their yearly condom giveaway in the holidays and once again I'm going to try to uh, be one of the people handing out their endangered species condoms between now and the new year more American babies will be conceived than in any other time of year you're talking of course I was conceived on New Year's Eve so we all know who my daddy is. Ho, ho, ho. So I am, I am a baby who was conceived on New Year's Eve. If, if, if Santa Claus had been wearing an endangered species condom, perhaps a caribou condom, uh, perhaps I would not be here to give you this rant. Right. And the center is doing our part to help make sure that all of this <coughs> holiday cheer does not contribute to unplanned pregnancies. There you go. And they will be giving away 40,000 free endangered species condoms to get people thinking about the impact of human population growth on endangered species. Let, let me tell you how much when uh, when you're grinding away doing the goat dance as Greg Brown would call it, the goat dance, let me tell you where uh, the concern for endangered species is on the minds of these clueless morons doing the goat dance all right, from there, I guess some new horseshit petition drive. We're going to send a petition, I guess, to Farrakh Obama. Who is the petition going to? I, I, don't, I don't know. I guess to Farrakh Obama uh, to limit the size of bomb trains, these crude oil trains. Uh, rolling time bombs to limit them to 30 cars each. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Man, I guess it's the day, it's the week of lawsuits. And we got some lawsuit to strengthen protections for the sage grouse. We have another lawsuit filed against doubling the fishing limits. For rare big eye tuna, it goes on and on. And anyway, let me jump over to my favorite <clears throat> environmental newsletter of the week from MangaBay.com, who Manga Bay goes all around the planet looking at all of these various stories from the past seven days from the mainstream alternative and most importantly the scientific media to see how this planet has been crashing around us while we have been stuffing our face with turkey and lining up lining up at Walmart at midnight on Thanksgiving what's been going on on the rest of the planet two stories on chameleons showing up and kicking off this week's uh, ecological meltdown roundup is featuring 
the world's rarest chameleon, the Chapman's Pygmy Chameleon. You can kiss goodbye the Chapman's Pygmy Chameleon, I guess found only not in Madagascar, but in Malawi. Malawi, Malawi in Sub-Saharan Africa. And I guess it has not been seen in the in 16 years. So I, I don't think it's the world's rarest. I, I think we've gone beyond the bend since they have not seen one of these little guys in 16 years, probably having something to do with the fact that its habitat has been whittled down to an area the size of 100 football fields. 100 football fields and not one has turned up in 16 years and this is all part of the larger story. The chameleon crisis extinction threatens 36% of world's chameleons. Is, is that <clears throat> extinction threatens? I, I'm not sure they meant to write the headline like that, but I kind of like it. Extinction, I guess, uh, anyway. <clears throat> Let's see. This is the newest update I mentioned last week about the IUCN's red list finds that this unique group of lizards is facing a crisis that could send dozens of chameleons, if not more, into extinction. And as I say, I think the, the Chapman's Pygmy has already lost that race. Okay, I, I love this one. <clears throat> Reeling in religious messages, how faith impacts fisheries in Fiji. Yeah, uh, and they're talking about <clears throat> Christian missionaries bringing the Christian faith to Fiji in 1835. And uh, you, you can imagine what the fisheries of Fiji look like today. And so we're going to get the Christian faith to save the Fiji fisheries. So we're going to see how having domination over all the world's fishes, fish that swim, is going to save Fiji's fisheries. You go, anyone believing that the Christian faith is going to save fish in Fiji, I've got something to tell you here on Black Friday. That was bullshit. Okay. Let's see, how about a story on earthworm farming in the West Bank? This is commentary from the West Bank. From what I'm told, there cannot be too many worm farms in the West Bank. There we go. Let's see. Uh, some unadulterated horseshit story about the Brazilian soy industry. As the Brazilian soy industry promising that it's not going to cut down any more rainforest, at least for the next 18 months. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. Anyway, let's see. Here's a story on the Myanmar red panda. One more species you can kiss goodbye to. The Myanmar red panda. Let's see. Here is a, a headline asking the question, whatever happened to the oil from the deep water Horizon disaster. 
They're still looking for that five million barrels of oil, which I assure you was a was a low number. This is the five million barrels of oil that uh, they admit uh, to being there. I think no, oh, maybe two and a half million gallons washed up on the beaches is still washing up on the beaches. But most of it, if you really want to find whatever happened to the oil and the uh, in the deep water horizon spill, I suggest you look at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico. Okay, from the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico, let's go over there to South Africa where we see the story, a new blood record. New blood record as we see 1,020 rhinos killed in South Africa in 2014 and we still got a month to go and already the old record has been shattered 1,020 rhinos gunned down in South Africa alone this year. Okay, I love these. I, 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 lo I love these two stories uh, next to these two related stories right next to each other. <clears throat> From uh, Sarawak. Uh, Sarawak, uh, what's one of those Southeast Asian islands with all of this palm oil uh, going on over there? Sarawak chief calls state's logging industry corrupt in a surprising statement. And this is a surprising statement uh, from any government official. Uh, in a surprising statement, Sarawak's new chief minister called the state's logging sector corrupt. There you go. Imagine that. Sarawak's logging industry is corrupt. And right next to that story, we have this story, Indonesia's anti-corruption agency questions former Ministry of Forestry, Minister of Forestry. You got to love the name of this organization, guys. The Indonesian Corruption Eradication Commission. I, I, I can't make this shit up. That the that Indonesia, Indonesia, has a new ministry called the Corruption Eradication Commission. There you go. Who last week questioned the former in, uh, Indonesian Ministry of Forestry about his role in altering zoning laws to facilitate oil palm expansion into Indonesian public lands. I guess he accepted bribes to convert areas status from production forest into non-forested land. Yes, I, uh, uh, well, uh, it is very easy to convert an area from productive forest to non-forested land. You, you just bring in a bunch of bulldozers and turn it into a palm oil plantation. Yep, yep, yep. And so anyway, let's go over... Uh, oh, well, so right next to that, of course, we have Ikea. Ikea now greenwashing uh, and its commitments to zero deforestation palm oil. I, Ikea? Why is Ikea e even talking about palm oil? Uh, anyone who thinks that Ikea, 
uh, one, uh, one of the most flagrant planet eaters on this planet, raping and pillaging a tropical rainforest, making a deforestation commitment. Oh, come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Okay, I, I mentioned this story last week. I'm glad it's showing up this week again because I want to compare the Manga Bay version of this story to the mainstream media story. Okay, this is Manga Bay. Rising deforestation. Rising deforestation and fossil fuel use drive Brazil's emissions 8% higher. Brazil's carbon emissions jumped almost 8% last year due to rising deforestation and fossil fuels use. I've had several stories the past week about uh, the skyrocketing deforestation rates in Brazil. And so what do we have? I'm, I'm going outside of mangabay.com right now, guys. We're going to flip over to this story in today's mainstream media from Associated Press. We have this story. Deforestation drops 18% in Brazil's Amazon. Huh, we seem to have a conflict between uh, the alternative media and the mainstream media. Deforestation in the Amazon rainforest has dropped 18% over the past 12 months, falling to the second lowest level in a quarter, in quarter century. Brazil's environment minister said on Wednesday. Hmm. So this is Isabella Texera told participants at a news conference about all of these, how Brazil is, uh, is saving the planet. Uh, let's see. Wednesday's lower figures came as a surprise because many environmental groups had been warning of a second consecutive spike in the annual deforestation numbers as the forest continues to be raised to make way for grasslands for cattle grazing, soy plantations, and logging. But the environment minister stuck by her guns, insisting that the numbers were accurate. And this is what World Wildlife Fund for Nature, Marco Lantimi, from the World Wildlife Fund uh, swallowing this unadulterated horseshit called the surprising announcement, quote, good news. We were surprised, but the major message is okay. It's good. <coughs> Brazil <coughs> has <coughs> been advancing. Okay, so anyway, enough of the mainstream media unadulterated horseshit. Let's see, I'm probably already 30 minutes into this. Okay, any, uh... All right, I guess we have two more. Here we have ranking the world's palm oil companies in terms of sustainability. Ranking the world's palm oil companies in terms of sustainability. I, 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 I bet that's a short report. That was bullshit. And I don't even know what this last story about, but uh, it sounds pretty good. <clears throat> Activist hijack Pepsi's newest product 
on Amazon over deforestation. Oh, this is talking about Amazon.com, a campaign launched by environmental activist is killing Pepsi's launch of its newest planet-eating product on Amazon.com. Anyway, guys, I gotta wrap up my Black Friday edition of my ecological meltdown roundup rant because I think I smell some turkey sandwiches coming out of the kitchen. So I gotta go slice me up a turkey sandwich and head to a picking party in North Austin, Texas on this absolutely gorgeous day in the end times as the power saws drown out the laughter of the little bundles of joy. Bye guys! The USA Made in China USA chair. Uh, there's no end.